Good evening. We're live. And welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. We are back again this weekend and going to have some fun. And I hope myself personally to uh, learn a few things tonight. Uh, we have Steve Garrison as the guest on the show. And he does a lot of scroll saw work and a lot of beautiful like uh, shells, helix coils and different stuff. So I hope to learn some stuff tonight, and he's got a few books out, too, and we'll talk about those in a little bit, but uh, I plan on buying one of his books and trying some of those shells. I think they're just beautiful, so, but we're back again, guys. We appreciate all of y'all who were over there in the chat. Uh, Sterling Davis is over there. Um, Moon Pie Kim from Moon, Moon from Moon Pie Creations. Robert Evans. Uh, Katie Dotson. Uh, Paul Camp, a lot of guys over there. So thank you all, all for watching and being with us tonight. I do appreciate it. Uh, as notes I have is um, remind everybody about the Whirly Gig Contest. That is still on and running to the 20th of October. And also the Scroll Saw Contest is running to the 31st of October. Both of those are still open. I haven't gotten any scroll saw uh, entries yet, but I think I've got three uh, whirly gig, and uh, we're still going to do the whirly gig. I mean, I got prizes to give away, so if you haven't entered, you still got time and uh, some really nice, nice prizes. So uh, I think part of the problem, and I've said this before on the last couple of shows, is that uh, Laney did not do it in July like he normally does, and so therefore. Uh, if people are used to that coming at a certain time and then it doesn't show up, they lose interest and it just goes away. So I plan on whether this one, I mean, we got three entries. So uh, next year I plan on running it in July, the same time that uh, it normally would be run. So hopefully next year in 2017 in July, we'll pick up and do a lot better. Maybe, uh, Maybe we'll get a few more. I hope so, because I really like to see that thing go and take off and become quite big. And uh, scroll saw, uh, I haven't got any interest on that yet, so I'm kind of worried about that. Usually I've already got two or three, but I think a lot of people are holding out to the last, so hopefully we'll get some of those. and got a lot of good prizes on that too, so don't forget about those two. And I guess the only thing else I have to talk about is my sponsors, Devobal Technologies for web design, development, hosting. Go to devobal.com and Olivewood 2000 for beautiful, elegant, holy land Olivewood. Visit Olivewood 2000 on eBay today and FastCap for innovative products for the professional woodworker. Visit FastCap.com. So, get all that out of the way. Uh, Steve, you'll be last. I will we'll go down the list to, and let everybody introduce themselves. And then we'll get to you last and okay. uh, talk to you. So uh, start off, let me undo myself so we can fly over to y'all. And we'll start off with Chris. Go ahead. Tell everybody where we can find you. Thanks, Russ. Uh, I'm Chris O'Hearn from the Old Cranky Workshop. You can find me on Facebook and on YouTube at Old Cranky Workshop. And as of 10 minutes ago, there's a new video up on the YouTube page. Back to you, Russ. Uh, what's your new video? The birdhouse. Oh, cool. Just cool. under the wire. Cool. Very good. Uh, Dave? Thank you, Russ. Uh, my name is Dave Gatton. Y'all can find me on um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that under Dave Gatton. Thanks for having me, Russ. You're welcome. Donald? I be Donald Matthews, also known as Donald Vlogify. My YouTube channel is Donald Vlogify's Woodshop. My website is rednecknowhow.com, and you find all my Twitter and Instagram information there on my YouTube channel. Great. Uh, and then John? Good evening, everybody. John Schaffner here from Central New York. Uh, you can find me on... Facebook and YouTube under my name, and eventually a website posted by Devol. Yeah, they've been having a, a couple of people posted on Facebook 
the last couple of days, my the mobile's been having some problems where there's they've had server issues. My website's been down a little bit lately, and so uh, even that you know it's bad when you go to your person hosting and their website's down. <laughs> So uh, then next is Mark. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Lindsay, and you can find me here on YouTube under my name, Mark Lindsay. Also on Facebook uh, in way too many groups to count and more and more every day. And that's it. Thank you for having me, Russ. You're welcome. And Russ Meadows. Hey, everybody. Uh, Russ Meadows. You can find me on Facebook. And Instagram under uh, my name, and also uh, Rusty Nails Woodshop. And Trevor, he's kind of a newbie. I don't think you've been on my show before, have you? No, no. It's okay. First time on the show, Russ. Thanks okay. for having me, buddy. Uh, uh, Trevor is with us tonight. Introduce yourself. Uh, Trevor Carter. I'm uh, find me on YouTube, uh, also Facebook and Instagram as Trevor's Woodshop. And Twitter is uh, at Trevor957. Great. And real quick before I get to Steve, uh, Opa's uh, out there. And uh, I mentioned this last week. So uh, there is a GoFundMe page for Opa. I think it's Cousins. Cousins. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last, last name. But I will put that into the um, information after the video is over, but he has a GoFundMe page. Let me work. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And uh, he had uh, his, well, I'm not going to be able to do this. He had his home and shop broken into. They lost a lot of uh, family jewelry and also uh, he lost a lot of his uh, tools. So, TJ from over at TJ's Woodshop um, started a GoFundMe page. So if you got a couple of extra bucks, I'm sure he would more than appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking over there to see. Give me one second. I'm looking on um, on the GoFundMe page real quick to see if I can find it. If I can't, then I'll just post it in later. By the end of the show, somebody can um, tell me the name of it. Yeah, I can't find it. We will find out by the end of the show so I can tell you where to go. And, uh, and also, I will put it into the information after the video for that. But it's OPA. I'm trying to see his, he's under Opa's wood shop, and I think his name is Cousins or Cousin, Cousins, K-O-S-E-N, I believe is how it's spelled. Anybody on the panel know? I think it's Coster. Coster? K-O-S-T-E-R, I believe. Okay. And he does have a uh, YouTube channel under Opa's workshop. Yep. Him and his uh, buddy Steve McQueen uh, put out uh, videos every week or so. And you were exactly right, John. It's Opa Coster, K-O-S-T-E-R. And I'm sure Opa Coster is the uh, where you can find it on the GoFundMe page. Also, TJ Woodworking is, I think, started the GoFundMe page. But, I mean, pretty sad. Like I said, they lost his wife lost a lot of uh, family jewelry, and then he lost a lot of his tools. So if you have a few extra books, um, show him a little love and send him some help. Okay, now that being said, uh, we have Steve Garrison on tonight. He is his Spirals by Steve. How you doing, Steve? Uh-oh, I th think he's locked up again. <laughs> he is. Okay, so we got to find uh, something to talk about until Steve gets back. But uh, he's having some difficulties with his camera and stuff tonight. For some reason, uh, it keeps on wanting to lock up on him. So it's not even. Uh, me, I've got. It's not even letting me click on him right now. There he goes. Yeah, it wouldn't let me. So he's. Uh, I think he's coming back in right now. Am I here? <laughs> You're here, but we can't see you. 
Okay, let me see if I can fix that. How about now? Yep. There okay. We go. Cool. Okay. Uh, introduce myself. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm Steve Garrison. Uh, website is spiralsbysteve.com, and on Facebook, uh, scroll saw shells or spirals by Steve. Great. Now, I, my first question to you is, what in the world got you uh, into making the shells and stuff? I mean, what triggered one day that, hey, I can make shells with a scroll saw? <laughs> uh, not getting any sound. You can't hear me? I hear you now. Okay. It's it now. I said, what triggered you to do the, uh, what, how did you figure out I'm, I can make a shell on a scroll saw the way you do it? Uh, are you familiar with the bowl from a board technique? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bowl from a board is where you take a, take a board and you saw rings out of it on a bevel angle. And uh, these rings, you can stack them up. And it'll be kind of like a cone shape. It'll make a bowl when you glue them together. And the shells are kind of the same thing, but instead of having a, a board that's the same thickness, you know, we're using a, a wedge-shaped pieces of wood where it's tapered on the thickness. And so uh, when you cut in through the edge at a bevel angle, uh, each piece you cut out is bigger than the last one. The uh, bevel angle makes the, the bottom side of the cut bigger than the top. And so... Uh, each piece that you cut out, after you cut it out, you put it on the next wedge and use it as a pattern for the next piece. And both from a board, I think most people just use uh, one piece of wood. But uh, when I'm making a shell, I'm using several wedges. In this demonstration, I've got uh, seven wedges. And so uh, I use those in rotation. And so that allows it to build up wall thickness. So as you come back around to the first one you used, you've, your wall thickness, you know, the, the, uh, the outline of the segments has grown quite a bit where you got more thickness to work with. And so originally I just, you know, got that idea in my head. What would happen if I, you know, did this on a taper instead of parallel? And that's what happened. And I, I liked the effect and, you know, kind of figured out what was going on and, uh, made modifications to it from there. Well, it's it's awesome. I've seen some of your work, some of your shells, and it's good. Do you have any right there with you you can show? Yeah, I've got this one here. Here, let me lock it on you. So, uh, all right, go ahead. Okay. Wow. That's neat. I made this one recently. This is just made out of uh, southern yellow pine. Really? Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. Thank you. I would have never in a million years figured you could make something. I mean, that looks like it's been turned, some kind of turned or something. That had, you never convinced me if I saw that somewhere and didn't know better that that was done on a scroll saw. Yeah. Most scroll saw work is, is pretty flat, you know, two-dimensional. But making it segmented, you know, it can uh, become three-dimensional like this. Awesome. Do you have another one? Uh, yeah, I think I do, if I can find it. This one here is made of lace wood. Beautiful. It's one of my older ones. That is just, man, that's fantastic. Thank you. Well, cool. uh, I guess you're going to go over, show us how to... Uh, do that. Does anybody have any questions real quick before you get started? Not yet. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, go ahead and uh, whatever you got prepared to show us. How long on average would it take you to make one of those? A small one like this one I can do in like in a weekend. And some of the larger ones that I've made, uh, you know, I can spend upwards for a month on. 
the bigger they get, the slower the work goes. You know, when they're real small, it all goes together real quick. But uh, the bigger it gets, the slower it goes. Um, the biggest, the biggest challenge with it is uh, shaping the interior. If you decide to do that, uh, from the scroll saw, each segment's got like a flat facet on the inside, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to go in there with like a, a Fordham or something and use something like this. This is a one-inch uh, carbide burr with a quarter-inch shank, and that works real well for uh, you know shaping the interior. And after that, I'll go in there with like a, a round nose uh, sanding ball to uh, do that. And the outside, I use uh, just like a five-inch disc sander on the drill press. You know, start with a coarser grit to knock the corners off, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, get finer grit from there. On an average, what is the thickness of the wood you're working with? Donna Presley wants to know. Average thickness? Uh, well, on the wedge, the thin edge is, you know, like about a sixteenth of an inch wide, and the, the thick side is, you know, almost inch and a half. Okay. Now, is that for the bigger bowls, or is that on average, even for the smaller bowls, or the smaller bowls would be smaller wedges? Uh, well, the bigger it grows, the uh, the wood towards the outside is what you're going to be cutting into. Okay. And so when they get bigger, uh, it's maybe practical to switch from a scroll saw to a band saw. Yeah. Okay. Well, show us what you got. Okay. Um, I've got one that I've started putting together, cutting out. Uh, you know, these are, this is the small end of it. That's where it starts. Um, the first segment is just kind of like a oval shape. Um, I cut it out, and then um, you just froze up. <laughs> and uh, Mastalon sounds mm -hmm. cutting out. Yep, this, you're cutting out. Rut row. Rut row. This is not going to be good. Okay, Feel something like, saying. <laughs> life on the farm's kind of laid back. Ain't nothing old country boy to me can't hack. <laughs> early rising, early in the sack. Thank God I'm a country boy. <laughs> Now, wild wood flowers go wild on the farm, and we never <laughs> knew why. <it> was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're sitting on that sack of seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, yeah. For some reason, his cam um, I don't know if it's a computer or his camera is giving him a fit. Uh, but he it keeps locking up on him. Now we talked for thirty minutes, thirty plus minutes, maybe thirty forty minutes the other day, and it never had a problem. Well, he's out. He'll be back. Let's drop the live. These live hangouts do some strange things. I mean, I've talked with people on Wi-Fi connections for a half hour, 45 minutes, but the minute you go live, boom, it just drags yeah. everything down, and they go away. Yeah. He's back. We can't. We we got your picture, but we don't hear you. Okay, can you hear me? I wasn't yep. talking a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason your camera keeps on, or whatever it keeps on cutting out. I'm not sure what's going on, but that's frustrating. Uh, where did I leave off? Where did Where did you lose me at? Uh, the little tiny piece you started. The first with piece that looks like an oval. Yep. Okay. Uh. As you trace the outline onto the next uh, wedge and saw it out, since you're cutting at a bevel, uh, each piece, each subsequent piece becomes larger than the one before. And so it grows from this size, you know, up to uh, this end, quite a bit bigger. And I've got a couple of segments that 
when you uh, put them all together, you know, it'll start resembling a shell. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But you'll want to cut these out, and um, I typically glue them together like in groups of four, and that way you can access the interior quite a bit easier with your uh, carving tool to get in there and smooth it. And then once you get it fairly smooth, then you can start, you know, blend pieces together, and then it just keeps getting larger from there. You pretty much have to smooth as you go, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get too much of it. It's yeah. More than a couple pieces. Yeah. If you get, if you put too much together all at once, it becomes hard to get into the interior without, you know, banging up the small part that's that's further mm -hmm. inside. So. I'll finish out the inside on, you know, groups of four before I start adding on to it. And don't know if you can see, move my camera a little bit. You can see the wedges that I've got down here. <clears throat> uh, I keep these numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, seven. Six was the last one that I used. That's this one here, and so uh, I cut this segment from it, and so what I'll do next is uh, go to the next one in the sequence, number seven, and I will uh, trace the outline, and it's important to keep this uh, narrow edge lined up. That narrow edge will become a small hole through the center of the shell. Can y'all still hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I just traced that on there, and I've got this tray that I set them on when I cut it. And the purpose of this tray, it increases the uh, the growth rate. You know, along the midpoint of the curve. You know, since you're propping up this. Uh, wedge it uh this angle that's made by the these props in this bottom plywood piece adds to the bevel angle you know that it's cutting at over in the midpoint of the each segment so I'll glue this piece on just a couple of small dots of hot glue make it easier to hang on to And then you can turn the camera over to the saw. You can see more clearly what I was talking about with this secondary wedge, this bottom piece. It's uh, propping the, the wedge up so that you get more of a bevel angle towards the mid, midpoint of the cut. So I'll go ahead and saw this piece out. out the, the next one and you can see putting the one before it on top of it you can see that it's gotten a little bit bigger oh yeah that's awesome so as I start gluing these together I will uh, put them together in groups of four and smooth out the interior uh, one thing I'm. Now, how did you get the original hole or the circle in the ones that you've already got laying that you've got numbered? Did you cut that? Is that the same size circle? Okay, say it again. 
Okay, your interior circle before you even trace, how did you get that into the wedge? Uh, the very first piece. Ah. Uh, the very first piece is just like a little, uh, like an oval shape. Okay, okay. Just with one of the curves. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Uh, that's just the start shape. I, I got you. Makes sense now. I had, uh, there for a second, I was not. I didn't realize what you were talking about. Now I understand. When you start off with the very first wedge, that becomes it. It just keeps growing and escalating up and up and up. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that bevel angle, you know, causes it to uh, spread out. The the bottom side of the cut is a little bit bigger than the top side. Right. So the bottom side from uh, one segment becomes the top side of the next one. Okay. And cut it out, it will grow some more. Now, there's a question in the chat room. Okay. Uh, I don't see the Jeff, chat room. Go ahead. Jeff, Robin, Jeff Robinson would like to know what size blade you're using on your scroll saw. It's a uh, blade. It's a number two skip tooth. Uh, yeah, skip tooth, uh, universal zero, uh, 11 thousandths curve, 25 teeth branch. Okay. Another uh, tooth skip tooth. I'm sure you could probably use just about anything, really, as long as it's able to cut through the thicker part of the wood. Yeah. Um, you could use a number two or even a number three uh, would even work for that I'm on the thicker end, but either one of those. Uh, also, you could use a scroll reverse. You don't have to use a skip tooth if that's just pine or something you're using. It'll cut through that. Without a, a three will cut through that pine without any problem. Now, if you're getting yeah. something a little harder or denser, you might have a little bit of problem, but I've cut through one inch and a half pine without any problem. Yeah. Yeah. You've probably got more experience in different blades than what I've got. Yeah. I, well, got, a, I just, got a whole bunch of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I just watched when you cut through that, that number two cut through that with, I mean, no problem. So, yeah. Yeah, it leaves a nice smooth finish, but but that's not, you know, not really a big deal because you, you sand it anyway. You right. You, you may have already answered this when I wasn't paying attention. Does it have to be a spiral blade, or can you do that with a standard scroll saw blade? No, I'm using, I'm using a standard blade, not using a spiral. Oh, huh, Okay. Yeah, he's using a flat blade. You don't. He's don't. He's not Charles Deering. He don't use spirals. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I, I reckon it was the spiral shell that yeah, I had spiral blades in my head. Yeah. Don't well, I've got, I've got the helix shapes that I use a spiral when I make those. Now, what brand of blade do you use? I've been using Olson. Olson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forget where I get where I bought those at somewhere. Yeah, a lot of people use. I I prefer Flying Dutchman. I've heard a lot of good things about them, and yeah. uh, but I've I've never bought any to try. Um, after I get a whole bunch of segments cut out, the next thing I'll do is to uh, flatten them before I glue them together. That way, you know, as long as the joint's good and flat, it'll be a tighter joint. So I'll just uh, draw a line, you know, on each surface, and I'll do this just before I glue a pair of them together. But I'll draw a line on it, and then get some sandpaper and put it on a flat surface, and then same the pencil mark off. That wasn't perfectly flat. It's still got some lead left on it. That's got it all off. So that was the uh, the bottom side of the smallest one that I had. And now I'll do the the mating surface that'll be the top side of the the next one. I'll do this just before I glue them together. You have an idea how steep the bevel is on those? Uh, I got my saw set at uh, four degrees right now. But, four degrees. Uh, 
I've got it set at four degrees on the saw, but because of this angle on the this tray, uh, the bevel has actually, you know, this angle added to it uh, when you're cutting in the midpoint. Right. And so, uh, <clears throat> back around the midpoint of the segment, it might be, you know, 11 or 12 degrees compared to, you know, four or five degrees on the sides. Right. So I do the other half of this joint. And when I glue those together, they real you be able to barely see that joint. Right. If you don't do that, you'll have gaps and it won't be as nice. That's actually a very simple way to do it, too. I would have never thought just rubbing it on a piece of sandpaper. What grid is that? About 150? Uh, I'm thinking it's, it's 120. 120, okay. But you can use about anything you want. Uh, right. When I start do, doing the uh, the larger segments as the shell grows, I'll point this up where you can see me. But as I uh, start doing the the larger segments, uh, the flatness becomes more important. Um, when the segments, when they're fairly thin, they will have a lot of flex to them, and you don't want to, you know, flex it to distort it as you're uh, flattening the surface, and it can become more of a problem as it gets larger. But at this size, it won't really matter. These aren't very flexible as at this size, but. Uh, when they get larger, I've got like a, a slab of uh, granite with a piece of 36 grit on it. And some of the joint surfaces can be quite large. Somebody and said the only re somebody said the only reason Dave's watching is because he's trying to figure out how you can do this on a CNC. <laughs> hmm. That's gonna be a tough one, Dave, on CNC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I've got another shell that's made with a different technique, but uh, it's probably the largest one I've made. Hey, we got plenty of time. We're just at 8:34. This is the largest one I've made. Holy crap! Wow, that's this a big different technique. I'll be writing about it in the future. I'm still. What figuring. kind of wood is that, Steve? This is curly maple. Wow. Really nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. I sold this one through a gallery, and the lady, she wanted me to uh, make her make a stand for it. So I've, she got it back to me, and I've got to make a stand for this one. But this one's about 14 inches across. Yikes. <clears throat> Do you have a particular price range, or are they all just cu each individual custom order, or what? How do you, how do you work that? Uh, I try to keep track of the time that I put into each one. A small one, you know, if I sell it through an art gallery, you know, I can go for two or three hundred mm -hmm. for starters. And uh, the one I just showed you, you know, that was um, fifteen hundred. Oh, <laughs> so it's a lot of time in that one. Yeah, it's you know like a month or two almost. My goodness. A few years ago. <clears throat> Trying to remember which side is which of this one. What kind of glue do you use to uh, when you actually glue the pieces together? I tight use bond. a tight bond original. Ah. It grabs really, really fast. Uh, I don't use any clamps or anything. I'll just use a rub joint. I'll... Uh, I'll show you here. I'll just uh, open it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> just enough to coat and glue on, on one piece, and I'll spread it around my fingertip. That's way too much glue. I got a piece of masking tape on the edge of my saw table because 
if I don't put that there, I'll put glue all over my saw table. <laughs> At least you don't drill holes in it like somebody I know. <laughs> Is Charles here tonight? No. <laughs> I didn't say that name, okay? Well, I, I saw his I in Who are you talking about? <laughs> He's going to be aggravated because I sent him the link and he didn't. He's not on, so he mu he must be sleeping through this. He wanted to be on tonight. Well, you snooze, you lose. Or I can't with his truck. Yeah. So you just hold that together until it sits. Yeah, for like ten or fifteen seconds, just long enough for it to grab. Yeah. And uh, you just want to, you know, find row of beads of glue to squeeze out. Yeah, I can't remember. Is that the glue that dries clear, or does it dry yellow? It uh, it looks dry yellow. Okay, you have to get that off then. Pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah, when you go to sand this, the first mm -hmm. grit I used is like a sixty grit, and that knocks that quarter down real quick. Mm -hmm. So. That's a pair of them glued together, and then uh, I would just go on and do the next ones until I got them all glued up in pairs, and then and then resurface the the joints to put together pairs of pairs into groups of four, and you know start sanding and shaping it. A uh, question from the right. chat. Uh, Mike or Mike wants to know on that last one you showed that was finished. What finish did you use on that? It's um polyurethane. Polyurethane? Yeah, I used uh, um, a trigger pump sprayer. Uh, you just pump with your fingers, like a bottle of hairspray or uh, plant mister or whatever. I'll take polyurethane and I'll thin it with um, naphtha and Forget the ratio I use. I think I'm thinking it's like a two parts naphtha to one part polyurethane, and that makes it real thin. And what that does is the uh, the finish has got uh, surface tension in it. That's what makes it draw up to form drips and and uh, beads. And if you eliminate that surface tension by thinning it, it will just uh, flow off as a sheet without the runs, and it'll just drip off the low spot. And you know it gets like a glass-like finish, and then after I don't know five or six coats, I'll uh, wet sand it and uh, put on final coat. But uh, I so just you actually just shoot that on there thin and just let it drip or flow yeah. down over the surface. Yeah, I'll uh, suspend it from a wire from hanging from the ceiling. And then the shell will be tipped where, you know, it, there's no spot inside for it to pull up. The low spot will be on the edge of the lip, and it can just drip off onto the newspaper on the floor. And I'll just I'll just spray it down until it just starts running off and get the whole thing covered, and and uh, call it good. Let it dry overnight, then do it again the next day. About one coat per day. Amazing. Thank you. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> I've, I mean, I've never thought of, I've dri I've dipped some stuff in polyurethane. I thinned the polyurethane down uh, with mineral spirits and dipped a few things and then hung it up and let it dry. And then I, what I would do is it was dripping toward the, on the edge, like you're talking about, I would take a, a um, my air gun and kind of like blow and knock them off. Yeah. They, before they would get a chance to set. I've done that before, but I've never thought about sending it with naphtha and, and trying that. Yeah, I think naphtha works a little bit better with polyurethane than uh, mineral spirits does. Uh, a painter friend of mine told me that trick, and it works really well. Temple Boy Turnings wants to know, do you have to think about grain direction when you're cutting or gluing the piece to prevent any movement in the piece later on down the road? Not really. Uh, you can orient it about any way you want to. Uh, with the way I've got these cut, these wedges, they were just, uh, this is made out of a two before. These are just pieces of four, uh, two before chopped into four inch long pieces. 
and uh, I just drew a line along the edge and and uh, made it tapered, you know, with a bandsaw. And I'll get it to where uh, the end grain is exposed along the outermost part, you know, and, and try to get it all, you know, where it's, you know, cut facing up or down. And but there's there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can use end grain. Uh, make it where it's just exposed in the lip only if the faces of the wedges, you know, have end grain exposed. So, do you uh, do you have a jig for your bandsaw that allows you to get that bevel the same every time, or do do you just kind of freehand it as you're going along? I just freehand it. I'll just get a straight edge and draw a line on there and do it by hand. And then, uh, you know, that's not going to be perfectly flat and smooth. I'll just Cut it on the bandsaw, and I'll take it over to a bench top disc sander and flatten it. You know, the same way I did the segments, I'll just yep. put a mark all over it and sand it flat until it's all gone. Yep, gotcha. Do you go over all and all this your techniques and how you're doing this from the bandsaw cutting and everything in your book on uh, shells? Mm -hmm. the reason I'm asking that because I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> If you're buying it, I've got a, uh, a discount code that I set up. Uh, you can get 30, 33% off. It's uh, The discount code itself is just 3-3, three, three, you know, the numbers. All right. Okay. So anybody, uh, what you're saying is anybody that wants to buy any of your books uh, that is watching this. Yeah. You enter the discount code 33 and you'll get a 33 or one third off. Yeah, that's that's good for tonight. Anyone that's watching the show tonight, okay, enter that thirty-three where it asks for a discount code, and that'll give you one third off anything you All right. buy. All right, guys. So y'all out there listening, there's a uh, sixty-two people watching us. Wow. Uh, you, uh, if you you want to buy a book tonight, tonight's the night. You get one third off. So I know as soon as I get off the uh, show tonight, where I'm going. <laughs> Because yeah. I do, I, I definitely want to try some of those. Those just look fantastic. I want to try that. Thank you. Um, I've got some other things that uh that I make that I'll show. Uh, most recently, my newest ebook is on a uh, box jointed tiles. That's these things. Yeah, those are pretty awesome. These are all uh, friction fit. They've got box joints. And uh, they come apart. There's no glue used in this. Now, those are cut on the table saw, correct? Yes. These are cut on table saw, and uh, I also used a router table in the construction process, too. But uh, that's a rather basic shape. That's a dodecahedron. And uh, I've got some more that I can show. I got this one that's been sitting on a table. That's a, a cube octahedron. Hey, what'd you say? A what'd you call me? Dr. What'd you Dr. call Hedren. me? <laughs> That's that. <laughs> the, check, the check's not going to be in the mail. You're not talking about my <laughs> mom, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, this is awesome. Look at this, guys. Whoa. Oh, boy. Wow. All the pieces in this, you know, like that, like that other one, they're all just uh, friction fit. And all these are uh, squares, and it's also got some triangles in it, too. That looks like it could come out of Star Wars. That's redneck DNA right there. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. Uh, no, I was going to say, it don't have that many uh, pieces to redneck DNA. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of pieces is just short. a lot of pieces are just short. <laughs> Cool. I've got more here I can show you. Damn. I popped in just in time because that was beautiful. This is my Death Star. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's neat. That is neat. I want that one. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. This one's also made of uh, just nothing but squares and triangles. Dang. Two different <laughs> shapes. What would it take you for time to do something like that one, Steve? 
The one that I just showed? Yeah, you'd be poking away at, say, something like that for, what, a month? Oh, no. No, I built that, like, in a day. Yikes. Um, the parts, let me grab something real quick that I can show you makes it easier to understand. Shout out to uh, Jim Bashirs over there, Temple Boy Wood Turnings. Appreciate y'all. Uh, Dan Inge. Um, I saw Steve French, a good friend of mine out there. I just had lunch with him the other day. <coughs> Hi, Steve. Glad you're here watching us. Wacky Woodworks is out there. Oh, uh, random audio guy. Thanks for watching. Um, there's a few other. Chris Glitzos, Glitzos, he's back. Hi, Steve. He just said hi, Russell. Okay, I'm back. But anyway, I appreciate all y'all guys out there in the chat. And if you have questions, I'm trying to look over there as good as I can. If I miss your question and you roll this, y'all are chatting pretty quick out there. So if it rolls by, just don't get frustrated. Type your question in again. I should be able to catch it the second time. But, uh, I appreciate all y'all out there in the chat watching and uh, appreciate you very much. All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, all these little tiles are made from uh, these bars. This is this will become triangles. There's the shape. And it's just a grooves cut with a table saw. Oh, yeah. And oh okay. Now I get you. Slice up into tiles. You know, this stick right here will make, I don't know, 40, 50 tiles. Yep. And I'll put them together like this when I slice them up. So I can make hundreds of them at a time. Yep. Now I get you. For some reason, I was, uh, I don't know why I was thinking that you were cutting each individual piece out on the scroll. So I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> yeah, that would be too time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> but now what kind of a blade do you use to cut those grooves? Are you using a, a, a Datto set or are you using the um, originally, I started using a dado set, and that's the uh, the tiles that are bigger, like on this one. Those are uh, the grooves here. You know, they got sharp square corners. Right. And uh, that looks like quarter inch groove. Slot. Yeah, yeah, they're quarter inch. Right. And these, okay. if you look at them closely. You can see the bottom of the groove is, you know, like a semicircle. Yes, I noticed that. Um, I got a special blade. It's it's like a, uh, they're made by uh, Bad Blade is the name of the company, and uh, that's the blades are originally made for like a carving with an angle grinder, and it's like a four and a half inches diameter. But it's you can still get it on a table saw if you use a, you know, an adapter to put it on a five eighths arbor. But uh, I put two of them on there. To, uh, to cut two grooves at the same time, and that makes it a whole lot more precise than using a dado blade. But uh, the, uh, the semicircle, that, those blades that I'm talking about, they've got a, a grind on the teeth that's um, similar to like a, a grind on a, chipple, a triple chip blade, and uh, I just used like a little diamond file to kind of smooth those corners over and made it to a semicircle. And I'll use, I'll put two of those blades on the saw at the same time to, to cut the grooves. And that makes it go a lot faster. And uh, I was able to design these where I can make triangles out of standard uh, four-quarter number. The, uh, the squares and pentagons, i got to have, you know, six or eight-quarter number to make those from. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And then you just take them and cut them into the thickness, whatever you will slice them into the thickness you want. Yeah, I'll slice them about two tenths of an inch thick. That's awesome. Here's another one. This is all triangles. Wow. I, I'm sorry, your head screwed on different than mine. Temple <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boyd Turnings has a question. He wanted to know if uh, Steve had ever taken it to a different level and made something like a. a Hang on, let me check it. A snail what, or a crab. You, what are you doing now? Not a different level? <laughs> the, uh, the shell thing, have you ever taken it to another level and made a snail or a crab? No, no, I just left it just a shell. I didn't try to put a creature inside it. 
I guess you could. Uh, the thoughts cross my mind. Uh, it make it look like a home for a hermit crap to move into. <laughs> yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um. All right, we're walk, rocking down the last eight or nine minutes of the show. What are the things that we have uh, as a tradition on here? Is that the guest and the you, uh, which is you, Steve? Um, we have what we call woodshop confessions. Okay. And that is you tell us one of the boneheadest things that you've done things in the shop that you've done when you after you did it you shook your you shook your head and said, Why the heck did I do that? What's what's some of your boneheaded mistakes? Uh, well, I'm drawing a blank on that one. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure oh, oh come on. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell us that you ain't never messed up in the shop before now. Uh, I'm sure I have. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of like me. He's messed up, but the boneheaded, I, boneheaded part, you know. <laughs> it, it's a bonehead. It's also real thick, so it's got to sink in for a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 the one that I did, it was pretty boneheaded. <laughs> what did you do? I took a knife that I won off of Russ's show, and the first time I used it, I just cut snot out of myself with it, just being stupid. <laughs> Instead of moving my finger, I tried to get that last little bit. <laughs> yeah. I've uh, used my miter saw, and uh, I caught myself before I did it, but I was uh, holding the part down with my left hand. And then chopping with the right hand, <laughs> and you know, if if I'd have gone through with that, I would have cut my wrist at least, if not cut my hand off. Wow! But, uh, but uh, I caught myself. So, Whoa! Don't do that. Shane didn't stop the other night when he was playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually uh, with my miter saw cutting a bunch of. Uh, different angles by doing it very quickly as I lift up the blade put the board in it you know, slice it lift it up and go and I just didn't think about getting too close to the blade and I uh, nipped my finger right on the side without blade still turning right on it wow. luckily it didn't really go all that deep so it's healed pretty nicely so yeah. yeah I had something that happened to me the other day that was it's stupid that was on my part <laughs> um, was I was cut I needed to cut an angle on a piece of wood that was probably about 12 inches long. Well, I had a hold of it, and I set it on the miter saw, and rather than changing the angle, I just angled the board. Yeah. And I've done that before and never had any problems. And as soon as I got about a third of the way into it, it for some reason it caught and snatched. It didn't go – my hand didn't go anywhere near the blade, but it caught, and my hand, it snatched that sucker out of my hand. And, <laughs> and I stood there and went, oh, you know, maybe I should have put that against the fence and and just did it the right way and moved the angle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was using my table saw one time, and and uh, I was just cutting a piece of quarter-inch plywood, and I wasn't really holding it down well enough, and I was feeding into the blade, and uh, the edge where it was you know, feeding into the blade, it kind of lifted up on top of the blade. It wasn't flat on the table, and without thinking, I just... You know, reached up there and pushed it down, and you know, threw it at me. Uh, it's table saw can throw pretty hard. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've been, had that one happen a time or two. There's been several, several uh, people. I've had that same thing. I was using some pl thin plywood and cutting a big piece, and like you said, as you're pushing it through, uh, here I'll take this off of you so we can see all of us. But, yeah, as you were pushing it through, um, if you get it just a little bit of an angle, it'll float up on top of that blade. There's not right. enough weight that it, it'll float up on top of that blade. Yeah, that's kind of scary, too. Yeah, you're not really sure exactly what to do right at that second. I, the time that I did, and it happened to me when it popped up there, I just reached down there with my knee. My, on my saw, my uh, stop switch is right where my knee's at. I can just take my knee and bump it and knock it off, and that's when I, I just stopped and hit it and knocked way until the stops. Saw stop before I did anything. Yeah. All right, guys. Any more questions over there in the chat section? 
for Steve before we end. We're rocking down here. We've got about four or five minutes to go. I appreciate all y'all Opa's over there. Uh, some of the, I ain't got my glasses on, so some of these guys I can't read read their name. Thomas Grimm. Hi, Thomas. I don't think I've seen you in the chat section before. You may have been. I just didn't see you. Um, appreciate you watching. Uh, Jeff Robinson. And don't forget, guys, um, tonight and tonight only, if you're wanting one of Steve's books uh, to get the one-third off, use the code behind him, 33. Three that three will, three three. That will work for tonight only to get one any one of his. Is that for as many as they want, or only one book? That's for all they want. All they want. Yeah. So you get one third off. So uh, his books are usually twenty four ninety nine. So if you buy four of them, that's a hundred. You get thirty dollars off. You get four books for seventy bucks. They can add up quite a bit. Yep, sure can. So. Any more questions? Uh. If you tilt, all right, Thomas Grimm wants to know, if you tilt, let's see if I can get back up here to read this. If you tilt the blocks on two axes, do you get three-dimensional three spirals? Are you, are you talking about on the shells? I, I don't know what he's talking about. Um, I think he's asking if you can curve it make the shell at the completed shell kind of curve to the right or to the left. Oh, kind of like a spiral. Yeah. That's what he, that's what I, when he's talking about axes, that's what I'm thinking he did. Yeah, I, instead of having it flat like this on the top of the table, can, but you have your bevel going up backwards. Can you tilt it and have the bevel going up backwards? Uh, I'm not sure. how that um, Yeah, I don't either. If you're, <laughs> if you're trying to make a like a conical spiral, that's something that I've been thinking about recently. I haven't don't have it in any books or anything, but uh, when I do, I'm going to write about it. Um, I've got one that was a experimental piece that's sitting right here. I'll grab it. Oh, well, another thing I wanted you to show us show us your heat uh, coils. The coils? Yeah, you didn't show that. Okay, but before I do, this is a shell that I've been experimenting with. It's kind of like a, a conical spiral. Okay. But I'm still working on that. I'm trying to figure that out. Here's the uh, helix forms. This is uh, I can make these on a trail saw. I made this one on a bandsaw though. These are made with a spiral blade. That is just awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. That looks like the worm we used to use in a meat grinder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's the uh, Where's the other one you showed for the other one? Uh, where did I set it? And maybe underneath this stuff. No. Do you Do you have a jig for those, Steve? Do you have like the two hole jig where you drill a hole in one piece, stick it on your like say you're going to use your scroll saw. Drill a hole in a square block and then drill a hole in another square block and put it in behind and kind of feed it through and twist as you're going through your two holes. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Um, I usually do it with a V block, you know, a long piece of wood with a V cut into it and yeah. let it go right in the trough. Uh, some people, when they do that, they'll uh, they'll leave the, the uh, table square to the blade and that will uh, make a shape like a like an old-timey looking uh, auger bit. Mm -hmm. But if you tilt the table, it will... Uh, I'm not sure where that other one went. If you tilt the table, it'll make a shape like this where it... A little of, bit more offside, yep. Yeah, where it kind of wraps around. Huh. Very cool. I've where tried those before. They're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, if you draw a spiral around a cylinder and using a spiral blade, it will cut the wood any direction you push against it. 
And so uh, if you take a cylinder and twist it through the blade, you can imagine like a, a spiral path uh, drawn around the cylinder. That will be the path along the uh, where the blade enters the wood on the top. And where, where it comes back out is a little bit further down the length. And I need a good visual aid to show that, but I don't have anything ready right now. Yeah, uh, because we're running down to, uh, we're at 9 o'clock right now anyway, so. Um, well, the way it works is the blade comes out of the wood along the same path that it goes into the wood. If you can imagine that. Um, I don't know whether that went. Okay, sorry. No, that's all right. I appreciate you uh, being on. We'll have to have you on again and... Uh, Maybe do uh, show us how you do the uh, helix coils. Okay, I That'd can do that. Yeah, that'll that'll take a little time to show, and yeah. I don't think we got time for it tonight. I was going to do that, but uh, ran short on time and difficulties. Yeah. You, you were he was worried about earlier when I talked to him that he was going to have enough to talk about, and I'm like, you'd be surprised <laughs> how quick an hour goes. So it did go by fast. <laughs> yeah. Hey, time flies when you're having fun. So Yeah, we must be having fun. Yep. Guys, I appreciate y'all all over in the chat. Uh, Debbie Shipman, she's over there. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, enjoyed, I hope y'all enjoyed it tonight and learned something. I know I did. And uh, like I said, I'm going to go over and uh, get one of at least one of his books, maybe a couple of them before the night's over. So uh, anybody else on the uh, appreciate you, Chris and Donald and John and Russ and Shane showed up at the last minute. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. And then uh, thanks, Trevor, for being on tonight. I really appreciate that. Hope you hope you learned something and had some fun too, Trevor. That was great. I definitely learned something tonight. Cool. I noticed you got your fireplace going over there behind you. It's a little nipply yeah. up there where you're at. It's starting to chill down a little bit at night. Yeah, we're getting down to minus one. I think it's two or three degrees tonight. It's it's starting to get chilly. Yeah. For those yeah, of I like a nice 32 degree night. You start <laughs> getting to <the> minuses. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, Trevor is like north of the border. He's our one of our Canadian friends. Makes sense. Yep, he gets a little cool. And then uh, you should be having some cool weather where you're at, Shane. Yeah, I think tonight has got down to about 43 tonight. 43? He yeah, lives up, up in North Dakota. Yep. So I got 45 in the shop right now. So ah. I'm and not we staying were, out long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it'll probably get down to 68 tonight here in Florida. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, was going to say, I think it's about 60 out there right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it ran about, I'm in the mid 70s myself. We ran up about 82, 85 today. It's cooled off a lot compared to we're not into the mid 90s or upper 90s right now. We've dropped back into the 80s, so that's nice. So yeah, it was 90 degrees on me today, and that was plenty hot. Well, guys, it's 65 right here, right now. We're wow. down to the end of the show. Thanks again, Steve, and we'll have you back on. Okay, thanks for having me on, Russ. You're very welcome, and thank you for being on and showing us all this stuff. We only got one more thing left to do, and that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye, gang.